Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I will show you how to create a very quick and simple animation of a point cloud model in Cloud Confer. So what I'm going to start with is this is going to be a very short video, very practical, and you will create stunning uh, animations in, in, in a variety of formats that you can use in your video recordings, in your videos um, in future. So what happens is like you can create this sort of animation and then post-process in Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere Rush, or Adobe After Effects. So the first thing is that I open already a model, a point cloud model that I already prepared a long time ago for, an, a sketch fab, for a sketch fab. So here is my model. So the first things, the first principle of this animation is, is whatever it is in the viewport here in the interface in this model is what is going to be animated. So if you if you want to animate, let's say this, and then um, I don't know disappear the part of the model and just focus on the second part is not possible in Cloud Compare. You can use other software, perhaps like Blender or uh, 3D Max or Cinema 4D, which are good for that. Um, so whatever it shows here, it will be animated. So the only thing that considers these animations is the location, angle, and perspective perhaps, but no the exact number of the points. So this will remain um, the same for all the keyframes. Okay, so that's having said that, that, the first thing I wanted to show you is how to, let's say color, not color, or represent these um, clouds. Um, using um, different techniques. Um, this one is the uh, iDOM lighting OpenGL shader, and this is the screen space ambient occlusion OpenGL shader. It's just simply how you shade your point clouds. So if you use this one here, you will see that it blurs a little bit. The smaller it is the point cloud, the less blurry it is, the bigger it is the point cloud, the blurrier it will become. Um, and I would prefer the EDL, which is the IDOM lighting. As you can see, if you go and you zoom out and you increase the number of point or, or the, the, the size of your point cloud, it will look better. What it makes this is just it's uh, create sharper images and sharper edges for your buildings or point clouds. And if you have very dense point cloud like this one, it will look very nice and stunning. Um, so if you don't have a very dense point clouds, you have to increase the default points and it will look better. So that creates this sort of sharp sharpness around the forms and the elements. And once I have done that, then I will start animating. So I will start creating viewports and the viewports can be created with the display, save viewport as an object, or you just can use the shortcut, which is control V. So I'll, let's go to the top view. I will start like this and once you have done this, um, I just put the view. I will, this might be the starting point of my uh, animation. Um, so I call, I call Ctrl V and I have my viewport. Interesting, okay. If you have done this previously, the viewport doesn't start with the number one, it just starts pro with the number 10 I've done before. So that's why it remains there. You have to close Cloud Compare, reopen it, and then your viewport will be number one. But it doesn't matter here, just to recognize the number. Okay, one, now once I have done this, I want to start animating. So let's imagine that I, what I want to is to show the model from a different angle, let's say this angle. So angle and zoom are considered in the animation process. So this might be my second, my second viewport, Control V. And then I will rotate it and I will zoom to one specific part, I will rotate and then I'll zoom into that part of the model. Okay, that might be port three. And then I will just increase, kind of zoom in a bit more just to add one more keyframe um, to make it smoother this or, or create a longer visual um, or longer time focusing on this particular zoom just create a new one. So you can have this viewports here. Once you have the viewports done, you just select them all. And then you just go to plugins, animation, or you just can go to the right hand um, um, 
tools and then click the animation tool. So what you have here is the view first viewport, the second, the third, and the fourth. So you see the third is a more like a intermediate and the fourth is the last one. So you can here define the total duration, let's say 14 seconds or 16 seconds, that means four seconds each, and this can be automatically, the duration can be automatically decided. So if you go here, it will be each of them four seconds, or you can also avoid the automatic step duration and then choose each one. So let's imagine you have four. In fact, what you have is the last, the last index or keyframe, it's just simply don't, doesn't count. Why? Because you, you count the transition between the first and the second, second and the third, the, the, the second and the third, and the third and the fourth. So these transitions are one, two, and three. That's why you have this called index. So these correspond to the transition between the viewport 10 and the viewport 11. This will correspond between the viewport 11 and viewport 12. And this between the viewport 12 and 13. So what I can do is just put four seconds to each of them, four and four. So in total, I will have a 12 second video. Simple. Okay, the last doesn't count. Then um, you can choose your smooth trajectory. So how smooth you want it. So you can play with this number if you want. Now it comes to the video output. The video output, you can choose your frame rate. So usually 30 frames per, per second. Of course, it will increase the number of frames. So you can export your frames later. So this means each photograph. Okay. So if you have 30 frames per second, multiply by 12 seconds, 360 images or frames. So it will make it longer. The processing time is quite fast. And they, you have the bit rate. The bit rate is the quality, defines the quality of your video. So the higher, the better quality for the bigger, but also bigger the style. And I, you can put 8,000 kilobytes per second, which is equivalent to 8 megabytes per second. Now it's time for the resolution. You can put zoom or super resolution. I put just super resolution. So uh, number two, number one just increases up to number four. The higher the number, the higher the resolution. I will just put it one to make the process faster. And then you can start previewing here also your frames. So you see all the 360 frames here. Uh, visualize so you can tweak the number of seconds between one frame and another one between one viewport and another one um, you can still tweak some things in the animation before rendering spending time of the render so I want to want to cancel here the preview then what we're gonna do is just choose the format and the location so the output the location will be here animation one is good we just save this and then I will choose among have tons of different output formats. I would choose the very common one, which is the MP4. And you can also export the trajectory. Um, I, I, if you want it, you can choose it. If not, for this case, I'm not doing it. And then I will start rendering. So now it starts rendering. And as you can see, it, it shows in real time the progress. Whatever you show here in this viewport is how it's going to be rendered. So if your model is big, is, is, is big and you've segmented one part, simply it will just render that small part that you segmented, okay? And the other thing is um, the video also will consider the, um, will, will, will have into account the type of GL filter you have on and off. So if you disable the, the IDOM lighting uh, filter here, Will look if it will look as as it is shown in the video in the in the interface. So I will pause the video here so you don't have to wait for the whole video rendering, and I will get back just uh, for when it's it's ready. It's ready for you. Okay. So here we are. We are approaching almost to the end of the rendering process, and we are 100%. And then you need to get successful. Um, if this is a successful warning. Um, it's just because there is a process after generating the frames to stitch all to create a video. We click OK. We don't close this. And then we go to the point clouds. Yes, they are. And so we go to the animation. It's 14 megabytes. It's not that big. And we choose the Windows Media Player, any other player. We just say yes. So you can see here 
the animation. Well, it was quick, fast, a bit fast in the first sequence. So what you have to here consider it was really fast in one part of the sequence. This happened because we turned too fast. So what I suggest is just to create more intermediate viewports, and then you just can put or assign two seconds to each of them. So it's a smoother, the trajectory. So what happened is like between this viewport and this one, it was not that much the difference, but between this one and this one, it was so much space in the trajectory. So we need one more viewport view here to smoothly create an intermediate point between this and this angle. That's why it is just very sudden, very fast. It's only four seconds and it has to go through this point to this point. The trajectory is longer than from this point to this point. And that's the reason. But this is part of the process of, um, it's an iterative process of learning to understand how, how what are the best settings and viewports for your models. So this is just a, a recommendation. Um, um, and I hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial. This is all for today. And see you next time.